meet Laurel. Hi, I'm Laurel, and this is my studio in Santa Monica. At a glance, Laurel appears to be your normal, average, all-American girl. That's what you think. But Laurel actually has a secret identity that very few people know about. Every weekend, Laurel hears the call of football. And in seconds, this mild-mannered woman transforms into Charger Girl. Ready to go. She's faster than a speeding bullet. Able to rouse tall crowds with a single noun. She's Charger Girl. During the week, Laurel assumes a normal life. Time for work. Living just outside of Los Angeles, California, she works nine to five as a pharmaceutical sales representative. Basically what that means is that I am in charge of representing my company um, in this territory and all the products they carry. So it's kind of my own business and I run it as a business. My other life is actually just on the weekends. When the weekend comes, Laurel heads down the coast to San Diego to prepare for her role as Charger Girl. On Saturdays, she trains for eight to ten hours. What do you think so far? Look pretty easy? Yeah? Anybody can do it. And early Sunday morning, she has a quick walkthrough. Then it's into costume. So we're going to go out into the parking lot now, mingle with the fans, kind of get up close and personal. This is actually our 16-month uh, swimsuit calendar, and we do this every year as a fundraiser. Hey, hey thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? Fine, how are you? Good. Looking forward to the game? Game? This looks like a job for Charger Girl. Man, oh man, oh man. What a way to start the football game. And once again, Charger Girl saves the day. Some people have called you flamboyant. Some people have called you eccentric. How do you describe your style? Um, I wouldn't say arrogant or, or flashy, just confident. You got to be confident in what you wear. You know, uh, most guys won't wear pink. I will. What in here is your favorite thing? Uh, probably these jerseys. Um, you know, I don't wear nothing but UM player. What are the rules to dressing? Dressing and press. Uh, you can't come out half stepping, you know. And if you're going to put it on uh, with the guys on our team, you're going to take a lot of criticism. I think this was a expensive suit and they they want to call my suit pajamas so <laughs> I got this new beer man hats you know uh, everybody going to regular hats and all that so you get throwback jerseys I got throwback hats you know I picked these up at a truck stop one day now what's the proper way to wear a hat probably stick it on your head you know and, and have it cocked over to the right you know just so, I mean, it's hat. not cool to, like, put the hat on. Not anymore, <laughs> you know. You, you could just put it on, you know, and try to cover up your eyes. Do you, does anybody ever wear them backwards anymore? Nah, no, I don't, that's nah. not cool. If you're going outside to build a house, you can wear it backwards. But other than that, <laughs> I'm going to show you the outfit I'm going to wear for the Raiders. Ooh. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I got a good one. This is everybody's favorite. Every woman I know got a purse to match this hat. You peep out a honey from underneath that hat. Too sexy for my hat. Too sexy for my hat.
kind of like The Bachelor, I guess. I like the, uh, the Apprentice a little bit, you know, I'm kind of like Donald Trump firing agents. But I, we didn't have any catchphrase. I didn't throw him a pass when I picked him. I didn't, it wasn't no, 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 no corny stuff. It was basically a business environment, you know, it's me picking my agent. And we stayed away from the cheese. Yeah. I mean, I wanted something that was serious, because it's, it's such an important decision. We talk about millions of dollars here at stake, not like a reality show where, you know, they can win 50 grand. And with that kind of cash hanging in the balance, the competition was fierce. Did any of them do anything? Slimy, like call you. Oh, there was a few of them that wanted to try to bend the rules. Yeah, there was some wild stuff going on. Can you leave our stuff alone, please? He was lucky because you get to really get to know these guys. Whereas when I came out and I'm picking an agent, it's like you take one meeting with the guy, maybe two, and then you base that whole decision off two meetings. You a little envious? A little envious. He's jealous. Tony Gonzalez is jealous of me. <laughs> Let's meet Sean Cody. In addition to hosting, Tony also acted as Sean's mentor, but made himself scarce when it came time for eliminations. With your negotiating, you kind of left a little money on the table. You're like, I don't have to make the decision. All I can do is just give you advice, and then I get to go home. The pressure's on him to go out there and pick an agent. Yeah, I remember selecting the agents, and I was like, oh, where's Tony at? Tony, <laughs> Tony took off, man. What's going on? You gotta make your own decision. And Justin, yesterday was tough. He was a little yeah. uncomfortable. You feel bad, like, yeah, because you, like, you get to know them. They're like your yeah. buddies after a while. You hang out with them all day, shooting the show, and you're like, yeah, these are your buddies, you know. I know this is tough, you know, it's tough for me too, but you know, this is something that needs to go on. And tonight, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to eliminate Justin. Did you cry? Didn't you cry? No, I didn't cry. Yeah, you did. No, Defensive you tackle. <laughs> Detroit Lions. I don't cry. In the end, the final decision was up to Sean, but that didn't keep Tony from weighing in. Do you think that he made the right choice? Yeah, put me on the spot here, right? That's a good stumper. No, I mean. Yeah, he made the right decision. If that's what he feels he needed to go with. Now, would I pick the same guy? Probably, probably not. I mean, that's the best part of the show, too. It's not predictable, but that's all part of it.